Yukon Cornelius 81 asks, if you were stranded on an island, what two Joes would you want with you and why? Uh, two Joes, I would want Outback uh, because he's a survivalist and so he would help, uh, help us survive on a deserted island. And then the other Joe, I would like uh, Scarlet. And I would just sit back and watch those two redheads tear each other apart. Uh, World Warrior 7 uh, asks, uh, what's the first figure you didn't like as a kid? I remember not liking Torpedo. That was one that I did not care for uh, at the time. Just, mm, no, um, Torpedo didn't love it. Did not love it. Um, okay, GI Bros says, uh, what do you do with figures you can't repair? I usually put them in a box and use them as parts. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I have some bags of parts of things that um, either I couldn't repair or I just haven't had the opportunity to try to repair yet. Um, so, yeah, I have a, like lots of parts that are just random and tossed in there. And some of them are broken and I'll just never be able to do anything with them. I have a hard time throwing them out though. It's very hard for me to throw away uh, any vintage item, even if it's broken. That's a tough thing for me to do. Uh, Max Rebo's Ghost's Music uh, says, uh, What other toy lines did you like as a kid? And I mentioned this other, uh, earlier. I like Star Wars, I like Transformers, I like Mask. If I were to choose any others, I kind of, I, I remember liking the Rambo uh, Force of Freedom toy line for a while, and I liked Centurions for a little while. Um, definitely not nearly as much appeal as G.I. Joe, but I liked them. You know, I had a few of them. Uh, what would you, what, what would have been your favorite if G.I. Joe didn't exist? Well, I probably would have stuck with Star Wars since that's kind of how I started out, like most of us uh, about my age. Start out with Star Wars and then G.I. Joe comes along. So it probably would have been Star Wars. Uh, was there any toy line you wished you had as a kid but didn't? I didn't have any He-Man and the Master of the Universe, and now I, I kind of wish that I did. My parents didn't like it, uh, so they didn't get any of them for us, so uh, I didn't have any. But looking back at it now, you know, I like it for reasons that are totally, you know, the opposite of G.I. Joe. I mean, it is the opposite of, you know, realistic, uh, but it's just goofy and fun, uh, and I think if I had them as a kid, I think I would have enjoyed them, but I didn't have any. Uh, David Neil Soriente says, um, if you could have, could have had the chance to design a Joe or Cobra vehicle, tank, aircraft, boat, etc., uh, what would have, uh, you like to have had made. Okay, what, what would I have liked um, if I could have designed one? I would have liked to have the Cobra cargo helicopter that we saw in the comic book all the time. Always showed that thing. It looked really cool. Wanted that vehicle. We never got it. So that's one that I would have done. Name your top five file card stories. So that is a hard question. So I did some thinking uh, and the five that I could come up with uh, that, that stand out in my mind as, uh, as kind of my favorites would be um, Keel Hall because it has just a lot of historical information in there, uh, Gung Ho because it paints him as a real badass, uh, Buzzer because it's just so quirky and, and really interesting. Uh, you could write a, a novel based on Buzzer's background. It's really that fascinating. Lady J, uh, just because of her education background uh, and her ability with languages and all that, is, I, I find really fascinating. Uh, and then Serpentor, oddly enough. Um, I really liked all of the historical references in Serpentor's file card. The character was never my favorite, the figure was never my favorite, but the file card I thought was really well written. Uh, name your top five mustaches in G.I. Joe and Cobra. Um, I would have to go, well, Mindbender, Dr. Mindbender, Rakondo has a pretty wicked mustache, uh, Torch from the Dreadnoughts, uh, Ambush, and uh, Bazooka. Uh, it's tough to narrow it down though because there are some pretty spectacular mustaches in G.I. Joe. Uh, Hezekiah St. Raven says, if you could go back in time and stop Hasbro from creating one character, what would it be? But wait, there's more to this. 
You are from the future. You know how things will work out for the Joe line. You must keep in mind that the repercussions of your choice, perhaps remo removing one character from the line, can make everything better. E.g., as a toy line, perhaps removing sci-fi may lessen the amount of future neon figures. Or, canonically, removing Dr. Mindbender would also remove Serpentor, uh, which would in turn remove all of the Cobra Law, etc. Okay, that's an interesting question. And despite the fact that I just said that I like Serpentor's file card, I think I would remove Serpentor from the line. And the reason for that is because that it, that's where the whole Cobra Law thing started. Because somebody at Hasbro decided they needed a Cobra Emperor, and so it was going to be either one that was, you know, created by Cobra, or one that, you know, was some outside um, influence that influenced Cobra, and they ended up going with both of them, you know. So if they had scrapped that whole concept, the whole Cobra Emperor concept, and just kept Cobra Commander as the leader of Cobra, it would have avoided Cobra Law, it would have avoided all the cringe-worthy moments in the animated movie. Um, so even though I like Serpentor's, Serpentor's file card, and I thought he turned out okay in the comic book, I would have done away with Serpentor. I would keep Dr. Mindbender because I like the idea of the, the bad guys having a mad scientist that creates all these weird technologies. I think that's okay. But Serpentor I could have lived without. Uh, Rudy... Uh, oh hey, you know, Rudy says I can just stick with his first name. So I'm going to stick with your first name, Rudy. Uh, so Rudy asks... Uh, Hey, HCC788, I hope you are well. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Thank you. Late Merry Christmas to you. Uh, one question is, uh, what do you think can be done to help the G.I. Joe brand be great again as it once was? Or are those days gone? I know the Bayformers helped Transformers be alive again. Do you think the same thing could happen to help G.I. Joe? Um, uh, for that, I think, you know, I really think they need to start fresh. Um, and I think that the next generation of G.I. Joe fans are not going to be real American hero fans. There's got to be a new G.I. Joe, something totally different. Um, nostalgia only gets you so far. Uh, and, so I think, and I think we've gone about as far as nostalgia can get us in G.I. Joe now. I think it is time for something new. Uh, uh, second question is, uh, what was HCC's uh, 788's favorite food? And any more bloopers? Uh, those were a lot of fun. Uh, favorite food? Um, I like Indian food. That's really good. Um, yeah, I like Indian food. I also like a good burger. I like a good burger. Not just like some McDonald's burger, but a good burger. Uh, but I've actually got to cut back on those. So that, that's a New Year's resolution. Uh, more bloopers. There will be more bloopers to come, trust me, because uh, I mess up a lot. And, you know, the, Susan and I, we, we have fun doing it, so there will be more bloopers in the future. Uh, third question uh, is, for fans of G.I. Joe that are considering collecting vintage 80s and 90s shows, uh, could help us tell uh, from the originals to the knockoffs. Because I saw recently there's a knockoff version of 85 Vintage Storm Shadow. It would be great if you could. Um, it's cool if you can't. Um, okay, and this is where he says I can just use his first name, Rudy. Okay, um, uh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know of a practical way to be able to guide you through all of the knockoffs um, other than just trying to show you as close as I can this is the real vintage item and the variants, and if you have something that looks different from that, well, it could be an international version or it could be a knockoff. Um, but uh, that's probably the close I can do, closest I can do to helping with that. Isaac Wilson uh, asks a number of questions. What's your holy grail? Uh, that would be the 1982 Cobra Missile Command headquarters. Uh, what's the best reproduction stickers out there? It's been a while since I've gotten reproduction stickers. Last time I got them it was from Cobra stickers and they worked just fine. Uh, I need a couple more uh, sets of reproduction stickers so I may uh, may pick up some more in the future and I'll let you know. Um, will you add any prototypes to your collection? Uh, I don't plan to. Um, it, again, it's outside the scope of my collection. I'm trying to stay narrowly focused. 
Uh, what do you think about reproduction parts? I think they're fine placeholders, but I want to get the original parts. I could have a reproduction part, but it would just be something that is standing in for the original until I can get the original. It's not complete until it has the original parts and not repro. Uh, if Hasbro asked uh, you what one G.I. Joe figure or vehicle could be remade, uh, what uh, would you pick and why? The killer whale. I'd love to see that again. Even though I don't get modern stuff, I would consider picking up a killer whale. I mean, I have picked up some modern vehicles before. I got the, the 2015 Silent Strike because I wanted to get the, the Gary Goggles figure with it. Uh, but I would probably pick up a modern killer whale if they ever did that one. That would be really cool. Um, if Hasbro asked you what one G.I. Joe figure, okay, they, you already asked that. Okay, last question. Any experience with uh, chrome plating to restore Sky Patrol figures? I have no experience with that at all. If I ever get any experience with that, I will let you know, but I don't know anything about that. Trent Avery asks, have a couple of questions for your upcoming Q&A video. One, what G.I. Joes from the 90s do you find most impressive? Uh, there are some really good figures from the 90s. Um, uh, well, I liked um, Ambush. Um, I li I'm kind of liking Bulletproof from DEF. Um, I like some of the later versions of Hawk. Um, and there are several, you know, there are several really good uh, 90s figures. So it's, it's not all bad in the 90s at all. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so there's some good ones. Um, uh, and two, would you consider doing a review of the G.I. Joe 12-inch Hall of Fame action figures? I don't plan to, uh, just because it's outside the scope of my collection. Uh, and so, I mean, maybe if I picked one up at some point, I might consider doing it like just a, for a special occasion. Kind of like I, when I did the 1964 uh, G.I. Joe action soldier. I, I, I would consider doing something like that. I just don't have any plans to do that right now. Uh, Kerouac <clears throat> says, uh, what, other to what other toy lines uh, were favorites besides obvious uh, G.I. Joe and Star Wars? Well, if I can't say Star Wars, then, um, of course, Mask and Transformers. <clears throat> I liked Rambo for a while, Centurions for a little while. I really liked the cartoon for the Centurions. Um, I also I liked uh, Secret Wars uh, because I was a big fan of Marvel Comics, and I was wanting to get some, you know, close to G.I. Joe scale Marvel Comics figures, um, and so that, that's what we had at the time. They're not great figures, but I still like them just because I really was happy to get some Marvel Comics uh, figures. So I liked Secret Wars um, and uh, GoBots. Actually, you know, I didn't mind GoBots. I liked Transformers more, but GoBots were okay. Michael Brewer. <clears throat> what if G.I. Joe was canceled and stopped after 1982, just the originals were made? Would you still be a fan? Man, well, that's a, a tough question. I, I, um, well, I was a fan back then, so I have to assume I would still be a fan of them today. Uh, but I definitely wouldn't be as much of a fan and probably wouldn't be doing YouTube videos about them because there just wouldn't be as much to talk about. I mean, you wouldn't have a lot of the figures that... Uh, really made the line great. Uh, there's no Gung Ho, there's no Baroness, there's no Destro. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, would, I would still probably ap appreciate and remember them well, but it's hard to be a fan uh, of only the 1982 toy line because I feel like the line did improve uh, over the next few years. <clears throat> John Paul Arredondo says, uh, will you ever review Steel Brigade Gold Head this coming year? <clears throat> well, I definitely want to review the Gold Head Steel Brigade. I don't think I'm going to get to it in 2017. Looking at the schedule um, and looking at just my ability to acquire one, um, it's going to take longer than that. It's, um, it, you know, that's a higher end figure. I, it, I have to get it complete with all the accessories and the file card. So it's going to take some time. It could happen in 2017, but it's, it doesn't seem too likely right now. Uh, John Perry, what about a figure or vehicle you wanted as a kid but never got? Uh, as a kid, I did not have the Sky Striker. My friend Sam had a Sky Striker. We would play with it all the time. I really wanted my own, and I never really had one of my own. 
Um, and so now I do. I have one, and I'm really excited about that. But didn't have one of my own as a kid, just the one that um, our friend had, and of course we played with it all the time. <clears throat> uh, Zazil Logan Phoenix uh, says, uh, can we get a Marauders Slaughters review? Yes, of course. I would love to review uh, Slaughters Marauders Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, it's, I think, my favorite from that sub-team. Uh, I don't have one yet, so it's going to take some time, but eventually I will do it. I just don't know when. <clears throat> All right, uh, they gone. Says, um, are there any Joes that just got away? You know that figure you could just kick yourself for not uh, getting that you could have gotten. Well, as a kid, I never had Snake Eyes version one. Always wanted it. Never found it on the shelves, uh, at least when I had the money to buy it. Uh, that was frustrating. Friends had it. I never had Snake Eyes version one. Of course, when Snake Eyes version two came out, I was all over that. Um, and, but as an adult collector, uh, there are some times when I should have picked up uh, some Starduster versions. Um, when they came up, they were at a good price, but I didn't pull the trigger on them. Um, I do have one version of Starduster. I need to get the others in order to be ready to review it. Um, and I, I could have done it, but I, I didn't. Um, and sometimes I wish I had. So that's one that I'd like to get in the near future. Deke Winsome says, I love your videos. Thank you. Uh, he says, uh, now, when will you review the finest G.I. Joe figure of them all, Snake Eyes version 4? I don't know. It is one that I know that I need to get to and has been requested. Um, I'm still looking at a way to fit him into the schedule next year. But I know that's a big one. I know. Uh, by the way, if you ask me to review a figure and it's like your favorite figure of all time, be prepared for me to maybe not love it as much as you do. You know, I, I may have a different perspective and maybe you won't like what I end up having to say about it. And I hate that. Uh, I don't like to disappoint people, but I'm always going to give you my honest and unvarnished opinion in every review. Uh, but I can guarantee you that I, I'm going to get to all of them. That's the, the goal. Uh, that's the whole point of the channel. I will get to them. Not sure on that one, but that one's a slightly higher priority. That's one that I'd like to get to uh, as soon as I can. Uh, he also asked, does Mrs. HCC788 uh, know about this Q&A? If so, will she be fielding all Sergeant Slaughter questions? Uh, and how many questions can we ask? Uh, yeah, she knows about it. She could have answered a Sergeant Slaughter question if you had asked one. Apparently, I didn't put any limit on how many questions you can ask, so people are asking lots of questions. Uh, but you didn't ask any additional questions. So, um, Oh, wait, no, here we go. Here we go. He did ask questions. Here we go. Uh, he says, um, you seem to not like the 90s very much, other than the bright, ugly colors, uh, stupidity gimmicks, uh, lame file cards, and generally low quality. What's so bad about the 90s? If not for every other era of Joe, they'd be my fra favorite. I see what you did there. Uh, he also says, uh, also, I know you don't get political, but after this diverse elections, uh, divisive election cycle, wow, I can't read after this divisive election cycle, I think your fans deserve to know Coke or Pepsi. Pepsi. Always been a Pepsi guy. I love the Pepsi. The last few questions I have include Mrs. Hooded Cobra Commander 788, so I brought Susan in here to answer these questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Uh, the first one by uh, from Playful uh, asks, uh, or says, as well as being informative, your videos are also fun to watch because they are entertaining with small skits and special effects. Thank you. Um, which leads me to ask this question. Which of your humorous skits or special effects was the most difficult to create and what was your favorite? Uh, and, or, and was it your favorite? Uh, the most difficult to create was uh, the Back to the Sci-Fi, the Back to the Future skit. That was really hard. You know, I have multiple characters on screen at the same time, had to sync them up, really hard to do. It, I, my favorite, though, was probably, was the introduction to Cobra Convergence. That one's still my favorite. And then he says, uh, the blooper, blooper reel suggests that Mrs. Hoda Cobra Commander 788 has as much fun as you do acting in some of those. So I would welcome her comments as well as yours on uh, this topic. So... Uh, the hardest one and most favorite. My hardest was the 
Back to the Future. It took so long to do because I kept on laughing. But it was really fun. Um, but I don't... My favorite would probably be the Weed Eater. Because that lawn really had to be done. And that uh, was fun just griping at him. Yeah. That was a good one. I like that one. Okay. Uh, Bjorn Jacob Benonison says, uh, to Mrs. HCC788, uh, did you know about G.I. Joe toys slash comics slash cartoon when you were a kid? Uh, did you have any brothers or neighborhood friends that played with Joes? If so, <coughs> excuse me, did you ever play with them? Uh, what was your favorite toy line when you were a kid? Uh, Merry Christmas to you uh, both and your family. Best wishes from Norway. I did know about G.I. Joe. My brother had a few toys. And he didn't have any play sets, I don't think. But he had a plane, I forgot what it is. Uh, but we would end up playing as kids, G.I. Joe and Star Wars combined. And it was, it was fun. But my favorite toy line was Rainbow Bright. And I had that doll and that horse forever, and then Mom gave it away. And you can't find them in good shape anymore. That's how it happens. I know. Mom always gives them away. She ruins it all. Come on, Mom. Okay, next question from Travis Miller. He says, uh, how big was your collection when you met your wife, or did you start to collect after you got married? Mrs. HCC, uh, did you ask to be in videos first? Or did uh, Mr. HCC have to convince you to be in uh, to be in them? First, uh, I didn't have a collection when we got together. I only started collecting a few years ago, and we've been together a lot longer than that. So, uh, so it's something that I started doing more recently. So the question for you is: uh, Did I have to uh, convince you to be in the videos, or did you ask me? Um, I didn't have to be convinced. He asked me, and I. Thought it would be fun, so I joined him. And it was fun. It's been fun. Uh, and then I think there's one more question from uh, Delios the Greek. For Mrs. HC788, how do you feel about the current state of Mr. HCC788's collection, i.e. has it expanded uh, and taken up too much space in your residence? Not anymore. Uh, we moved, and so it took up it actually took more space, but we have more space now to use. Um, it's, um, I don't know, the collection's been fine and he can keep it for now. Great. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find more space I'll, somewhere. I'll, I'll find a space for it. It'll, it'll all fit. So that was it. We got to all the questions. I'm pretty sure I got everybody's question. I hope I didn't miss any. I don't think that I did. But thank you all for asking the questions. Also, thank you for watching every week. I really appreciate it. Uh, and thanks to Susan for uh, helping me out and being a good sport about everything. And so uh, you don't want to say bye to everybody? Bye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye 2016. And we will see you all next year.